Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Plain Bagel. We're back with another light on frills, uh, hot off the press, if you will, uh, unscripted video about bed, bath, and beyond. Uh, sort of party pooper video, if you will, although it's kind of a, a pooped party because people are already angry about what's happened with this stock. Which if you aren't familiar, Bed Bath & Beyond, that store that we all hated being dragged to with our parents when we were younger, well, it's actually a publicly traded retailer under the ticker BBBY. And it recently rose very quickly and then declined very quickly in the markets. And it's actually caused a bit of drama in the world of finance and more specifically within retail investing. From the end of July to August 17th, the stock had a really big rally going up 360% over the span of basically half a month. Which if you don't pay attention to this kind of news, which no one would blame you, um, it might be a little shocking because the store isn't exactly the most you know, cutting edge or exciting position for an investor. But as you might be aware, Bed Bath & Beyond is a meme stock. That's right, it's an official label now. <laughs> Back in January of 2021, this company alongside GameStop and AMC saw its initial surge in value as investors online actively sought to find companies that they believed were being unfairly beaten down by institutional short sellers, by people with a lot of money that were betting against the company and perhaps unfairly compressing the value of that business. And Bed Bath & Beyond was one of those chosen companies by subreddits like Wall Street Bets that investors kind of rallied behind and started buying this position, a struggling retailer that's kind of been losing revenue uh, since 2018 uh, that had a pretty large short interest. While the short interest as of July end was 42.6%, which is still a sizable amount, it was much higher back in early 2021. And recently this year, meme stocks have had a bit of a, a renaissance where they're starting to recover a bit of their lost value from their peaks way back in January of 2021. Uh, but as mentioned, as Bed Bath & Beyond was rallying this week at a very extreme level, it very quickly dropped thereafter. And the running narrative around that is that all this activity, including the rise and subsequently the, the fall, is tied to one man, Ryan Cohen. Ryan Cohen is the chair of GameStop. So right away, <laughs> important figure in the world of meme stocks. And for many, he was actually a bit of a leader in that movement uh, because he came to this company in January, right before the big surge at the end of that month, uh, basically promising to revolutionize the company, right? To, to make it more competitive, to help move more sales online, and to even you know, explore things like NFTs. And they've actually since launched an NFT marketplace. And as for Bed Bath & Beyond, he was actually an active investor in that company as well. He brought three appointees to the board himself and actually owned one-tenth of the entire business. He owned one-tenth of the share float, um, at least up until recently. And before going into the details, I'll basically summarize that people think Ryan Cohen pumped and dumped Bed Bath & Beyond. That he got investors really excited about this company that he was still hanging on. He purchased it early in 2022, uh, only for him to sell very quickly thereafter within six months of, of, you know, again, bringing these revolutionary promises and ideas that he was hoping to turn around the company with. But what actually happened? Well, back in March of 2022, Ryan Cohen filed a Schedule 13D, which is a form that you need to fill out if you become an owner of a business with more than 5% of the outstanding float of shares. And so Ryan Cohen was disclosing that he had come to own roughly 10% of the company, which included 7.78 million shares of the company itself and a number of out of the money call options. Call options being something that lets you buy a stock at a specified price, out of the money just meaning that the price that those options specified was pretty well above what the current stock price was, but they, they move with the share itself. So they also increase and decrease in value with the underlying share, in this case, Bed Bath & Beyond. And on this past Tuesday on August 16th, Ryan Cohen filed an amendment to the 13D, basically saying that he still had a big position in Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, which some speculate actually sent the stock into a bit of a rally. Now that's hard to claim, you know, it's very hard to prove things like that in the world of stock markets. But you know, there was this kind of reassurance that this big figure was sticking it out with this company that was still struggling, had just reported a negative quarter of results. And from Friday close to Wednesday close of this past week, the stock was up 78.2%. But here is where things get messy because a day after filing this 13D amendment on August 17th, after the markets are closed, it's disclosed that Ryan Cohen has filled out a form 144, a notice of proposed sale. Basically, he was disclosing that he wanted to sell his shares. Now this was enough to send the stock plummeting as all of a sudden this important figure in that universe uh, was pulling his support from Bed Bath & Beyond a mere day, if you will, after announcing that he was still a big shareholder. 
But the final nail in the coffin came on the 18th, where he filed another amendment to his 13D, where he said that, yes, he had actually sold all of his shares on the 16th and the 17th. Meaning that on the same day that he had filed this 13D amendment, where he said he was still a big shareholder in Bid Bath & Beyond, that he still owned one-tenth of the company, he had actually sold a big chunk of his position, leading some, like we mentioned, to believe that Ryan Cohen had carried out a pump and dump. And from last week's peak price of roughly $28, the stock is now down over 60%. And with Ryan Cohen having an average cost base of $15.34 per share, he obviously made a good amount of money from this trade. And, and that's basically the whole story. There are meme stock investors that are very angry at Ryan Cohen uh, because of, of this rapid sale. Not only because, you know, there's this general culture with, with meme stocks and, and, you know, the ape army and stuff where it's just hold on for dear life. No matter what happens, don't sell. And you have the figure of, of GameStop, this, this prominent individual, uh, kind of at the front of that movement having changed course. But outside of that, there's the fact that this could be a situation of, of pump and dump. Because as we've seen with, with figures like Elon Musk, what you say online and, and what you disclose matters. And especially if it moves markets, you're not allowed to utilize that for your own benefit. And many people are calling for an investigation into whether things were done properly. Because obviously, it's a bad look <laughs> to sell stocks the same day that you're announcing an intent to sell stocks. And that that not really circulating on the news cycle until the next following day after you've already sold all your positions. But I can't really provide an informed opinion about whether this would actually be a legal pump and dump case and what the chances of this, you know, leading to some sort of charge or whatever have you would be. Uh, but the reason I wanted to put out this video, you know, it's obviously not a very in-depth story, but I think there are takeaways for investors that we can discuss. Regarding the resurgence of meme stocks, that might lead some people to believe that, you know, we're going back to January of 2021, we're headed back to the moon. It's important to recognize that we are in a fundamentally different environment than we were even a year and a half ago. We have rising interest rates and quantitative tightening, which if you aren't familiar, reduces valuations of shares and really makes for an unpleasant environment for speculators. It really does discourage speculation in stocks because for one, the cost of capital, the, the money that people are moving around and investing in, in meme stocks or whatever, it actually increases, it becomes more expensive for people to invest their money. And you might have this culling of weak businesses, companies with high debt loads that are struggling that kind of fit the bill for most meme stocks. And I'm really not looking to give a stock pick recommendation here. I'm not telling you to buy or to sell BBBY or God forbid, to short, <laughs> your, your boy's not looking for trouble. But it really is a cautionary tale about speculating on meme stocks, and that's kind of the takeaway I'm trying to share. You know, it's not to say that you can't buy these companies. If you want to do that, all the power to you. But you need to do so for the right reason. There's a lot of misguided, you know, justifications for buying companies like Bed Bath & Beyond. One of them being that in the past, they surged very quickly in price. That's never a good reason to buy a position. We even had people on Twitter begging Ryan Cohen before they knew that he had sold begging him just to say something positive about BBBY because for a lot of people, they believe that that's what matters and, and you know, that's what's going to save them is, is an individual, you know, an influencer, I guess, <laughs> in the world of meme stocks. And it just goes to show how finicky and how fragile that stuff is and why, for the average show, it's not really worth betting your life savings on that kind of activity when a tweet from a person could determine whether you're financially successful or not. And yes, as with anything, you know, people have made a killing from meme stocks in the past. And, and even with BBBY, uh, I'm sure you've seen the story of, of the 20 year old who made millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars from a big bet he had on the position that he sold right before the <laughs> Ryan Cohen news hit. Uh, but important things to keep in mind on the one hand, he started with a position in the $20 million range. <laughs> so obviously not your average Joe investor. And secondly, we always hear these types of stories, but really this is representative bias, right? To believe that this is representative of what we would experience as investors in this area, when clearly that's not the case. And even the belief people have around short squeezing that, you know, this is an opportunity to see this stock skyrocket in value because you have all this short interest. And hey, as long as you can tip over that first domino, you're going to see the share price rally because you have all these short sellers trying to fill in the gaps. But that's, a little misled. It's not to say that short squeezing isn't a real thing and that it doesn't have a material impact on the stock's price. It does. And it did with GameStop, for example. But we've actually seen reports from the SEC since the GameStop fiasco showing that the vast majority of the movement in that share's price had very little to do with covering shorts. You can see in this chart that there was activity in January of short sellers covering their positions 
Afterwards, after people saw this trend, the vast majority of the movement was investors going long on this position. And you can bet that there are a lot of hedge funds that benefited just as much, if not much more, than the average retail investor from the surge in GameStop's price. So hey, all the power to you to you short squeezes in your thesis, but clearly it wasn't the determining factor for GameStop. And I wouldn't kind of rely on a repeat of what we saw in January of 2021, knowing what we know today. And hopefully it goes to show you that while you may love GameStop, while you may love any of your positions, they don't love you. <laughs> Sorry to, to inform you. Anyway, that's the video. As with any position I've talked about in the past, I'm not trying to predict where it will go in the future, but it's for that reason, you know, the speculative and, and unpredictable nature of these positions that leads me to just not want to play that game. You know, it's just a game I don't want to be involved with. Let people speculate, let people make their money and lose their money in that field. You'll be just as happy, if not, you know, on an average basis, more happy <laughs> using a, a more grounded approach with your investment management. Thank you for joining me today. I know I went on a bit of a tangent at the end there. I just try to draw things back to how normal, you know, everyday investors should view these type of things and, and how it should impact their own investment approach. And obviously because gambling is not a very reliable approach to, you know, financial security, that's kind of the, the summation of, of everything I said. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on BBBY and meme stocks down below, especially if you disagree with anything I've said. I truly believe debate is the path to truth. And I would highly encourage that in the comment section. Like, subscribe, all that stuff if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, as always, be safe out there.